Hey Forge members, Anthony here and welcome to the third video in our React tutorial series. In the last video we made a very simple counter app which we can see right here and all it really did was whenever we clicked increment it would increment this count, whenever we clicked decrement it would decrement the count and the way that we did that was through this thing that we called state. If you're still unsure of what state is please make sure that you watch the last video and the first video in this series. Now in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the props keyword. Um, this is a fundamental concept in React that will allow you to pass in variables from a parent into a child component that makes code really reusable and it allows you to see why React is one of, a, uh, one of the great um, scalable frameworks and, and why this component architecture really is useful. So let's add on to our little web app over here and what we're going to do is we're simply going to add uh, profiles for maybe um, random people that we could have. Let's say this is like a, a website for our company. We want to add profiles for our people, our employees. Um, so pretty much what I want to do is I want to display a profile picture with the person's first name uh, and then maybe their last name and then maybe their, um, let's say, uh, job description at the company right under it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my code, we're going to look at this file structure and I'm just going to create another component in the source folder and let's call this profile. Um, so if you remember in the last video we had a way to set up uh, this sort of default template component structure uh, which we did for the counter. Now what I'm going to do here is I actually installed an extension. Let me see if I can actually find that. Uh, and this extension is the uh, ES7 React Redux GraphQL React uh, native snippets. And what that allows you to do is uh, it's really useful and it saves a lot of time. What I can do is I can just type RCC and this extension will automatically create uh, my component for me, or rather the template component for me. So this is everything I need to really uh, start working on uh, this component. One thing that I might recommend doing, as you can see here, um, in this one line we declare the class and we also export it. Uh, sometimes when you're doing uh, more complicated web projects with React, such as maybe using um, browser router or uh, material UI or width styles, which we will get into in future videos, um, you want to make sure that you actually export the class uh, separately from the declaration. So we can export, uh, just copy that and um, copy that down there. So you can see here we have export default uh, counter for this component. We just want to do the same thing here so that we're exporting it at the bottom of the file. And that allows us to add any modifiers we would like to add to the component uh, while exporting it, which we couldn't do when it was in uh, the previous uh, syntax. So now that we've done here, let's say, uh, let's start building our component out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to build out the basic HTML um, and then we're going to worry about passing in the values we need to. So let's say the first thing we have here is maybe the profile picture and what I did was I just googled a random, um, a ra uh, I just found like a random uh, uh, Facebook default profile picture. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that uh, image address and I'm just going to uh, add that in over here. So I'll say source is equal to the URL. We'll give it an alt and we'll just say pick and then we're going to end that. Oh by the way, so I don't know if you guys uh, notice that but whenever I save the file it'll automatically uh, format. Whenever I save a file it automatically formats uh, this React code and um, that's due to another uh, extension I have called Prettier uh, Code Formatter which I also highly recommend um, installing as well on your VS Code if you use VS Code. It's just very useful. Um, you don't have to worry about making sure everything's structured and it looks nice because it'll automatically organize all that for you. So now if I were to save um, you can see that nothing will be here yet because we haven't yet imported uh, the profile component and put it in our app. So what we're going to do is simply import profile from the profile file. And now what we can do is under the counter we'll just create uh, the profile component. 
and here we go. So now we just have a basic uh, profile picture. And obviously, if we were to copy and paste this three, di uh, three different times, we would have three different profile pictures. So now let's think about um, how we want to format uh, their name. Let's just put their name so we can maybe have like an H1 for their name and be like a uh, name here and then maybe like a paragraph for their job description. Let's, let's say this person is a software engineer. And now if we save this, we can see that uh, this is what our format looks like. And again, if we were to paste another one in here, we would just have two repeats of it. So now let's quickly think about how we want to pass in this information. So it doesn't make sense, for example, if we have two different employees, let's, let, let's say we have two different employees. One of them's name is, uh, let's say we have employee one who, whose name is Bob and he is a software engineer. And then we have employee two whose name is Stephanie and she is the CEO. So it doesn't make sense to make two different profile uh, components and set each component, you know, set one of the components to Bob and software engineer and then the second component to Stephanie and CEO. Um, that would be really redundant in terms of code. And that's where the beauty of this component architecture comes in. When we call these two profile uh, components here, we actually have the option to pass in information um, to pass in the information here and have it display programmatically here. So I'll show you what that means. We are gonna pass that information through a variable called a prop. So whenever you wanna call a prop, you do this dot props dot and then the variable name. So let's uh, create, let's say we have a prop called name and a prop called position. So I could do this dot props dot name over here and remember whenever you want to embed javascript code inside of this sort of html structure you just have to use these squiggly brackets and then i can do this dot props dot position now you'll notice we're going to get an error if we try to or sorry not an error but nothing will show up when we try to display this and that is because we haven't actually passed our props in yet. So the way we do that is we can come back, and by the way, this is just, uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with commenting in JavaScript, this stuff right here is just uh, commenting. I just wrote this out as a visual so you guys can see it, uh, but this doesn't actually do anything. So what we can do in this profile section right here, um, for each component that we declare, we can actually say something like name is equal to Bob and position is equal to software engineer. Now, if we were to save that and run it, we would see for our first profile component, those props would actually be passed in. And now for this specific component, maybe uh, how about I put something in between just to, um, how about I put something in between just so you can um, see the difference between the two components. So you can see for our first profile component, because we are passing in, those parameters, um, it, ha it takes on the name Bob and Software Engineer, as we can see here. Now, all we have to do for the second profile is set our name to Stephanie and our position equal to Software, or sorry, CEO. And now, bam. So now we've just seen how a single component can be reused multiple times to display different information even though the core eight, uh, the core file itself never changes and this is really useful because in a lot of cases you'll be dealing with a lot of different data uh, within the same component. You'll want to reuse the same component for a lot of different data over and over and over again. And with regular HTML, you would just have to copy and paste that same HTML structure over and over again. But here we've done it in a programmatic way where we're able to reuse this component multiple different times for multiple different use cases. Now, let's try and clean this up a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a state component here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is like we discussed in the last video, I'm going to add our constructor function and I'm going to call super props. Uh, just uh, again, if you don't know what this means, don't worry about it. We will be diving into it uh, in future videos, exactly what this syntax means. But for now, uh, just know that's necessary. Now we're going to say this dot state is equal to uh, a dictionary. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a list. So let's call, let's have an employees variable. So employees, and that variable is going to be a list. And inside of that list, we are going to have a pretty much a dictionary of uh, names and positions. So for example, our first employee, we can say name is Bob and position is software engineer. I apologize if this whole state structure is a bit confusing, uh, but just bear with it. So in the second element in our list, uh, we're, we can pretty much just copy and paste this over and over again for the amount of employees we have. So our second employee is going to be named Stephanie, and she's going to be the CEO. And the let's make a third employee, and let's name this person, I don't know, Jim, and he's going to be, let's say, like the C. T O. <laughs> so now what we've done is we pretty much just created an array that has a, 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 an array of employees and each employee has pretty much a name and a position. So now what we're going to do here is let's delete uh, this code over here where we hard code um, each person's name and position. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop. So uh, a for each loop. So the way we're going to do that is we're simply going to create two squiggly brackets to denote that we are writing JavaScript code here. Now, if you're not familiar with for eaching through uh, a list or the map syntax in JavaScript, this next part might be a bit confusing, but essentially what we want to do is we want to for each through this list of employees. And the way we're going to do that is through the map function in JavaScript. So we can say this.state.employees, which is our list, dot map, and we are going to assign the iterator uh, variable to employee and create a simple arrow function. Now, once we are in this function, pretty much if we wanted to get the employee's name, we would just type employee.name. If we wanted to get the employee's position, we could just type employee.position. Now, the way we embed that into the HTML structure and call our profile component, the first thing we have to do is type return. Now, when we type return, that signifies that we're ready to start pretty much writing HTML once again, to put it simply. Now what we can do is we can create our profile component and we can say our name for the profile component, our name for the prop is going to be equal to the employee dot, oh, oh remember uh, one thing you have to do is make sure you add squiggly brackets whenever you're trying to type in JavaScript again. So it's going to be equal to our employee object dot name, the name attribute of our employee object. And the position is going to just be equal to the employee's position. Now you'll see if we close these tags and we save the file, we can go back to our React app and here we go. We have three different employees here. We have Bob who is the software engineer, we have Stephanie who is the CEO, and Jim who is the CTO. So I hope this just goes to show how useful the component architecture is and how good it is for not uh, having redundant code and being able to reuse uh, the components that you have multiple times. In the next video, we're going to go over not just how to pass uh, data from the parent to the child, but how to pass data back from the child to the parent. So I'll see you guys in the next video, and thanks for watching.